So essentially what masking is, is the process of like cutting or, or covering something up in the video, whether it's an element of like text or it's the actual video itself or it's an overlaid image to therefore reveal or make some certain effect. For instance, what if someone was like walking from one side of the frame to the other side of the frame and they were like basically cutting in front of the shot just like this. See what you saw here was me walking in front of the frame, but obviously I masked out the section that was behind me. So when I walked in front of it, I had this nice transition to this shot from that shot. That's kind of what I mean by masking it in different situations. Okay, so we're back at the house now and we're gonna talk about how we actually took what I just did there and made it happen. Okay, so let's talk about it. How do we actually mask something to make like, for instance, the effect you saw in the beginning. So here in my timeline in Premiere Pro, I have a word or a graphic, you know, a text graphic labeled masking. I've already started the process to make it a little simpler, but we're gonna get into it and see how I did it and then how you could do it too. Masking, we selected it in our timeline. It's selected, it's clicked. Now in our effect controls panel, it's popped up. You can see that, you know, masking is the text. It's a text graphic. Scroll down, you can see that I have under opacity, the word mask. This is in fact what we're doing. This is the mask that I've already applied to this shot and edited. If you have nothing, right, I can delete this for instance, and I'll have nothing, I won't be there. So what you go ahead and do is go to opacity, press the pen tool or free draw bezier tool. And then let's say, we know what we want to mask, which is me. I want to cut myself out. Let's do, do this extremely rough. I know the shape of my head, right? It's, it's a head shape, cut this out, and then we'll connect the dots. Now, all that we have is inside of this mask, but that doesn't look right. We want the words, not what's inside the mask. So we come down here, we press inverted, and now it will only select what's outside the mask to show, and whatever's inside that mask will now be covered or erased or you know temporarily disabled if you would. And when I say temporarily disabled, all I mean is that if you were to delete this mask, you get that information back. So it's a non-destructive workflow. Um, real quick, I'm gonna go ahead and back this up so I can get the work I already had done to it. There's a lot of keyframes down here. And if you don't understand what keyframing is, I will make another video on it and it will be linked here whenever that comes out. But keyframing is essentially telling the software or telling in this case our opacity layer at this frame in time this is the information you should have in reference now the information that we have is the mask and this information about the mask is the shape of the mask in this current moment in time so on this frame under the mask this is the shape the mask should be in this keyframe now if we moved forward one frame you can see that I moved and the mask moved with me. That wasn't an automatic process, that was something I did. So we'll go ahead and we'll zoom in to about 150, 200%. Let's just go 200. Set it you know, to be centered so we can see what we're working with here. And you can tell that if I click off, you can see the mask is a little fuzzy and that's on purpose. It makes masking a little easier. It's not perfect and I'm not going for perfect because this is a YouTube video and not a movie. But if you click on masking again, and you click on the mask again to see the keyframes or see the points on the mask. You can see that we can technically click these and move them around. We can click and drag them, we can change the shape and that's exactly what I did. So that first step like I just showed you was me selecting a more accurate shape than what I did a second ago. And I went around the object, which is me on that first frame here and I selected it. Then I closed that and inverted it and here I have, you know, me masked out. So I look now like I'm in front of the text and I just did that for every single frame. It is tedious, it is a pain in the ass sometimes, but at the end of the day, it is what needs to be done to get this masking completed. And I know that DaVinci Resolve has some AI tools and some other softwares have some AI tools where you can like, where you can basically select the object and it will track it for you. And now while that is all great, I know the software, this is just what I worked in. That being said, I can see here that this part of the mask actually has a problem. It's a little bit high above my shoulder. So let's go ahead at 400%. You can see that there's a gap here where it's a little fuzzy. Maybe we should click this line, drag it down, control the Bezier curve, hold Alt or Option, click that one to get it back in the shape we wanted it. In that case, it's around my chin. I'm gonna click this one, click that, that. And now this is a slightly better looking mask than what we had just a second ago. Now you do this for every frame. So we'll go back to mask down here. And this frame is selected because we know it's selected because it's blue. And if we click forward, we can go to the next frame that is currently keyframed in there. And we know that that's following the shape of me again, because again, I've gone ahead and clicked this step forward one frame button. And I'm going to every frame and taking the mask that I already had and modified it to fit the new shape or the new location of where it should be. So you go ahead and you do that for every single frame. And you can see some of them are a little less accurate than others that's user error but you go ahead you do that for every frame we'll, we'll zoom out and it follows me all the time and then obviously i cut it here to work on a different section of the mask because i figured it'd be easier to work in sections we'll do this one real quick and we'll move to the next shot right here click on the mask you'll see the shape we have which is more suited for like when i'm closer to the camera like that and we will adjust this shape so go to fit 
I like to go to 150, at least 200% on 4K footage. Come here, take the shoulder of my shoulder, do something like that, take this point, bring it closer, press Alt to drag just that one end of the Bezier curve, slide up, I take this one, I'm gonna go to like part of my collar here, fix that as well. And basically all we have to do is just line up the mask with the shape we have. Now the more complex the shape, the more tedious and time consuming it will be. That's just the nature of masking, but that's part of the workflow. Click and drag this in place here. Click and drag the top one here. We'll just round this off, click it and drag, get the arms off of it in case you don't have those. It's a hard point like that, right? You don't have the little arms to work with. You click and drag in the direction you want to go and it will create the arms for you. You know, you can select like a box select. You can drag all these points if you want closer to the subject. In this case, that you know, that kind of fits my face. And again, we're doing this quickly. So like this one, I'll do something like that. And that's the entire process. Time to again, you just do this until you get the mask shape you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up and we'll be right back. Okay, so we're done with that mask and you can now see that the mask fits around me here. And if I were to move forward, it will take this point right here and it will slowly transition it from this point right here to whatever this point's keyframe is. So if I click this one, you can see that it's keyed around me. And if you click this back one, it'll jump to the first frame. And if I click through here, it will try its best to follow the shape that it is to expand to those points. So each little individual point on that mask will move to fit roughly where it thinks it should be. Now, usually it's not terribly accurate, but that will allow you to not have to keyframe every single frame. Now that you have an understanding of that, let's go see how I did the other shot. Let's go right here, this is the shot, right? I'm not in the frame. And then all of a sudden I'm walking and there's the shot, I'm fading whatever was behind me, it's now gone, you can see the edge of my arm here, and it's a kind of a rough, crappy mask, so let's go back and fix this mask. I decided, okay, I'm walking in here, and now this could be a car, this could be a person, it could be something else. I'm walking in the frame, and I'm covering it from top to bottom. Everything's covered, it's like this streak right here, being close enough to the frame, so when it goes like this, it covers the frame. That being said, I know that the shot starts here and I'm in the frame, but the back of me is not in the frame yet until this key right here, where you can see part of my neck is now exposed. If I went ahead and I turned off this keyframe, you can see that the actual shot behind me is still there because again, this is a non-destructive workflow. But if I turn the opacity back on, you can see that the mask is now reapplied. And all that is, I cut out this little section of my neck here. The next frame, I cut out again, following the back of my head shape. And I did that for every frame. And you can see it's a little messy here. So let's go ahead, click on that keyframe, click on the mask, click and drag these together. It might not be perfect again, but the more time you take, the better it can. And now if I click this again, and I click off, you can see the framing is a little bit cleaner. It's a little better. Now that motion blur actually helps because that allows you to do something called feathering which I can take this and I can shrink it down and you can see how harsh the line that is, or I can feather up and change how much motion blur you kind of have. And now it wouldn't be considered motion blur. What it is, is it's taking that line and blending it more with the first shot to the second shot. So it's less of an obvious mask and more of a natural looking thing. In this case, that would work really well because I'm shooting at a lower shutter speed and that allows me to use the motion blur to my advantage. Oh, it's all right, that's okay. You know, it's not perfect, but it's, it does a job right there. Look at that. You can see part of the water, we don't want that. So take that keyframe, click the mask, and let's go ahead and fix that. Get that closer to the back of my head. Now if I click off and click back on, you can see that that's a lot better. Sure, part of that sidewalk's back there, but for my sake, because of how fast this is moving, you're not even gonna see it, I'm not gonna worry about it. Click the next frame, another big problem, a bit more obvious. So let's go ahead and move this in, perfect. Now again, we just fixed that little problem, but I've already keyframed a lot of this, that next keyframe. It's gonna have a similar problem. So mask, another thing you can do is grab the whole mask and you can just drag it around wherever you want it to be. Obviously, I don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna click and undo, but I'm gonna take these points right here together and just drag them all closer because they all need to be moved closer. The motion blur again helps us because that motion blur helps it look a little bit more natural. And you just do that for every single shot. Now, as we walk it back, you can see as I walk in front of the frame, I'm bringing and dragging along the frame with me. And then when I get here, this point would theoretically have gone over like this and you would have seen what we didn't want you to see. So undo that. And now if you just watch this back, I expanded that part once it got there to accommodate for the fact that I would have cut it off. So I just stretched it wider. And that's all masking is. Masking is just covering up a little section, just cutting out a little section, and then keyframing that positioning over, you know, however long the frame is or however long the shot is, so it works consistently across the whole length of time you want to edit for. It's tedious, it's kind of annoying to do, but I think that sometimes the effect is very much worth it, especially when you see the final product and it makes sense. 
Sometimes people do it for the visuals. Sometimes they mask things because it helps transition the story from one point to another, or it's just a, you know some cinematic choice, if you would, some editing choice that hopefully helps the video's quality or storyline logic or, or whatever it might be. So that's why masking is important. That's how you mask, very simply put. Sure, there's other options. There's better options like After Effects, but in Premiere Pro, if you don't wanna leave the software like I don't a lot of times, this is a really good way to do so, and I hope that it helped you guys. So if you guys enjoyed the video and you want to see another video like this that's more on, you know, more technical aspects of editing rather than just color grading, let me know. I'll be happy to do it. Again, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys got something out of this. And below in the comments, if you would, put a question that you have for the channel, for me, something you want to see, so I can do a Q&A with those questions. I already have some, but I want to get it quite a bit so I make it worth your while to watch. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for the support of the channel, and I'll see you guys... Uh, See you soon. Okay.